Hello and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be looking at this question, but before we do, I want to thank the newest Patreon, which is Mike, Micah Wood, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, who is a gold supporter. You can see his name at the top right now. If you want to support the channel via Patreon, there's a link down in the video description. And there's a bunch of other links such as subscribing to the channel or liking the video, it costs nothing. And we have a Discord server where you get additional perks if you support via Patreon. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about this question, which comes from a GATE 2019 exam. So this is the language of all strings um, uh, in a language L, which is a subset of AB star. So the alphabet here is AB. So it's just some arbitrary, uh, arbitrary regular language. And we want to answer the question of which one of these four is not regular. And as always, instead of just figuring, uh, just saying which one is not regular, we want to understand why it isn't regular. So pause the video and try to figure out uh, before continuing whether it's the first one's not regular, the second one isn't, third or fourth. And there's only one answer here. So the answer is actually the second one right here. So the first, the third, and the fourth are all regular. And they are all, let me turn off the notifications, of course. So they're all based off of this notion of reversal. So if you think about it, the prefix of a string, so let's just say we have x here. x is the beginning of the string x, y, so it's a prefix. And the suffix is kind of like the reverse of the string in some sense. So the y part is just the end of the string, whereas the x part here is at the beginning. So prefixes and suffixes are kind of related to each other in terms of like reversal. And here we have reversal here, which is the language L, which is the original regular language we started with, and the reverse language. So you basically take any string in the first language and any string in the second one, and you reverse the second one, and you join them together. Well, we know that regular languages are closed under concatenation. So if L to the R is regular, then uh, L concatenated with it is also regular too, because we know that regular languages are closed under, comp uh, not complement, concatenation. So how do you actually show reversal is regular? So here's um, a little, um, not P, let's call it uh, a lemma which is if L is regular, then L to the R is regular too. And why is this? Well, we can do a really simple proof and that's the one I'm just gonna use. There's a more complicated one you could use. But what I'm gonna do is, um, because we know that L is regular, we know that there is a regex for it. Regex R for L. So if, um, r is equal to the empty set, so it's the regex is just the empty set, then the reverse, um, the, the reverse one for the, the reverse language, or reverse regex would be, so empty set is a regex for uh, l to the r. And similarly, if r is just the empty string, then empty string is a regex for l to the r, if R is just a single character, then that single character is a regex for L to the R2. So what if R is equal to the union of two smaller regexes? Well, the union, it doesn't matter what the order actually is. So we can actually just make a regex for the reverse language by just saying R1 reverse, I know R to the R, but R1 reversed union R2 reversed is a regex for L to the R because the order doesn't matter of whether the strings in R1 come first or the R2 strings come first for a union, it doesn't matter. But for concatenation, that's where things get a little tricky. So what you can actually show is that if you reverse the order of the two and take the reverse of both of them, then you get a a regex for the reverse language. And why is that? Well, take a string from that R1 makes and a string that R2 makes, then if you reverse the string itself, then what will happen is the part for R1 
will now be at the end in, in the reverse order. And similarly, R2 is at the end here, whatever string was made with this, and now that when you reverse the string, you get the same thing, but reversed, but at the front. So that's, uh, you can prove inductively that this is true. But then also, if R is R1 star, it's the star of some regex, then what we can do is we can do the, we can take the, so no, I'm solving this live. So what we can do is we can take the, the reverse of the regex and star that whole thing, and it's a regex for L to the R. So you can prove this, uh, that um, regular languages are closed under reversal. So if L is regular, the reverse language is also regular. So this immediately tells us that this one is regular because L to the R is regular because we know L is regular. So this one's regular. Um, what about for suffixes and prefixes? Well, this one can be made a little bit more simply. So let's try to answer prefix first. So prefix of L is the, recalls the set of all strings X in sigma star such that, let's just make sure I get that right, yep, so x, y is in L for some uh, y in sigma star. So it's basically take any string in the language and then you could take either the string itself or just take prefixes and, until you get to the beginning. So here's the idea. Well suppose that we have a DFA for L because, and we know one exists because L is regular by assumption. And let's say that it just has a bunch of states in it like this. And so here's what we're gonna do. Well, suppose that in the DFA, we started the start state and then we took a bunch of transitions like this and then eventually got to the accept state. So this part right, this right here is x, y, because that's saying x, y is in L, which means that we started at the start state and go to a, a final state somewhere. Well, that means that there's some way to break up the string into an x part into a y part. And note that this is not pumping lemma related, it's just names x and y. So what I can do here is I can take some part of it and call that x, and then the rest of it I'm going to call y. And by break it up, I mean the things that we read on the transitions, those are the things that correspond to x or to y. So what we can do then is, well, we can actually break this up any way that we want to, as long as the result's in the language. So for this path right here, we can actually break it up and start at some random point anywhere we want to along this whole thing. So what we can do is we can actually go to each of the intermediate states in turn on the um, on empty string. So that allows us to start at the start state but allow us to go to any one of the other states if we want to and then immediately start there. So, and, but I'm not gonna allow us to have a transition from an intermediate state to some uh, other state on epsilon 2 because that would allow us to do two different jumps. What we would want to do is to... Oh, I I'm doing this backwards. Oh, this should be suffix. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'll leave prefix here. And suffix is the one that I'm doing here. But the construction is almost identical. So y in sigma star such that um, x, y is an L for some x in sigma star. That's the part of um, solving these live. Um, so let's see. So the suffix is just saying um, we can start at some random point and then go through. So the construction here is, well, we can take from this start state, we can go to any of the states from the start state alone and go on the empty string. But here's a potential problem. 
what if there's a transition that goes into the start state and if we do that then we can take the epsilon transition again so that's not what we want to do here what we want to do is to do this to make a brand new start state that epsilons its way to all reachable states in the original machine and by reachable i mean the ones that the original start state could reach so I'm going to have an epsilon transition to all of these. So epsilon, epsilon. So a bunch of epsilon transitions for everyone. And why does this work? Well, here, what we're doing is we're allowing ourselves to start at any state, but there's no epsilon transitions within this part of the machine, only the ones that come from this brand new start state. So when we take an epsilon transition, that's telling us where to actually start. And that's how non-determinism works. It makes a choice that leads to acceptance if there's a way to accept. So here we're just going to just some random state and we have to follow the transitions normally because the rest of it is just a DFA. Cool. And then what about for prefix? So again, let's have a DFA for L right here. And we're gonna do something similar. So let's just say that we have uh, final states here and what does prefix say well it says that um, we are just going to read a bunch of stuff at the beginning and then some string is going to land us in a uh, final state so what I want to do is to do something like this well I want to have the X part be the part that I read, and then the Y part be the rest of the string. So what do we actually do here? So let's see, so what would you actually do here? So the X part is, X and sigma star such that X, Y is in L for some Y in sigma star. So we know how to do suffixes because we can read the y part and then now what we want to do is to read the the x part. Okay, yeah. So here's the idea. So um, here what we did was from some the start state we made a transition from this one on epsilon to a state like this one where this state can reach it over here because I want to be able to um, accept the string as if I started from here anyway, the original whole string uh, x, y. But, and I, and for the, so x, y is the whole string that the original DFA had, but here I just want to accept the, the suffixes. Here I want the prefixes, which means that I want to have a, a state in the middle here uh, it has its normal transitions, but it's going to have an epsilon transition to a final state, and it doesn't necessarily matter which one, at least in principle. Um, and why do we want to do that? And we only want to have a transition from this one to this to a final state if we can reach it. So the pro again, the problem is, well, this uh, final state could go take a number of transitions and eventually lead back to that state and then we can take like a loop or something. So that's not what we would want. What we want to do is to do something like this. To make a brand new final state, make the old ones final, uh, I mean not final, and then epsilon our way over from these. If we can go from this state to a final state somehow. So what we're going to have is, say, Q goes on epsilon to this final state I'm going to call F. If and only if Q can reach a final state in the original DFA. And why does that work? Well, we're here going to read some prefix and then end up at a state that at some point may will have an epsilon transition to this final state which means that the original state here had some way to go to a final state 
if there was some state in here that had no way to go to a final state, then I won't be making this here. Because if I land in some hypothetical state right here that has uh, no way to reach a final state, then if we go from the start state to here, then that means that there's no way to ever get to a final state in the first place. So that means that there's no prefixes that are going to be accepted in the first place. There's no x, y to start with that's in the language. And so what is the rule? So this is the rule for prefix. What is the rule for suffix? So we're going to have, let's just call this state uh, q0. So q0 is going to have an epsilon transition to q. And let's just, actually we'll call it q0 prime. So q0 prime will have a transition to q. And let's call the original state q0, the start state q0, if and only if q0 can reach q. So if the original start state can reach uh, some random state in the middle, then I will have an tr epsilon transition from the brand new start state to that state q. And so it's kind of shortcutting its way to the to that state and then it has to follow the transitions normally after that. Okay, so after all that, we can confidently say that suffix and prefix are regular. So that would leave us um, with WW reverse not being regular. And why is it not regular? We'll take L to be sigma star, then this language is the set of all even length palindromes. And it's pretty easy to be able to use something like the pumping lemma to show that this is not regular. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment or uh, something else below if you're able to find out this answer in a completely different way. There probably is because of the number of, of ways to represent regular languages. And uh, thank you for your support. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It costs nothing and it takes very little time, but it really helps grow the channel. And as always, I'll see you next time.